uh, we can have a nice 15 minute break for the next break actually. So dipolar non-active and active is frozen shear flow orientational pinning cross stream migration and particle focusing will be the title of the next talk but by Mamarza Shabania from our institute, uh, IPM in Tehran. Okay, Mamarza, please proceed. Mamarza, we can hear you. I think you are uh, muted somehow. Uh huh, presenting. We see the slides. But no voice, you're muted, I think. Okay. Hello and good afternoon, sure. everyone. Uh, my internet is a bit slow, so I might lose the connection in the middle. I will try my best. Uh, I want to talk today about uh, two classes of magnetic spheroids. Uh, the first category uh, is uh, representative of magnetic bacteria, active particles that passively orient themselves towards the Earth's magnetic field and then uh, migrate towards the oxic and oxic transition zone. The other class of uh, magnetic spheroids that I want to talk about are the passive magnetic spheroids. These are uh, separated based on their shape, as you can see on the right, uh, by uh, focusing the prolate spheroids on the channel center line in a recent experiment. Now, in order to explain these two problems, we use a single model based on continuum probabilistic dis description of uh, Smolkovsky equation. The difference between the two cases are, of course, first, uh, the swimmers have a constant swimming velocity, but the passive spheroids don't. And uh, instead, the passive spheroids uh, are driven, are translated by a lift velocity induced by the hydrodynamic interactions with the channel walls. The orientational dynamics are basically the same. In a channel flow, uh, be it a quid flow on the top for the case of passive part active particles and or a quasi flow for the case of passive particles, uh, there is there are two contributions to the rotational velocity. One uh, regarding the Jeff Jeffrey orbits and the other one regarding the magnetic torque that eventually pins the orientation of particles in a single direction. Now going to the case of active particles, as we can see, for prolate swimmers, when we look at the fraction of swimmers in the lower half of the channel, as we can see, uh, by increasing the strength of the field from zero, we see a linear response and a linear rate of migration towards the lower half until we reach the full migration case. However, for the oblate swimmers, we do have a linear response, but after a certain point, there is a reverse migration, meaning that by increasing the strength of the field, more and more swimmers will end up in the upper half instead of the lower half. And then at a certain threshold, all the swimmers will, will migrate to the lower half and we will have a full migration. Now this sudden migration to the lower half will become handy as we will explain in the next slides. In order to explain this, we uh, will uh, consider the case of uh, field-modified Jeffrey orbits. As we can see, the uh, classic Jeffrey orbits in the zero magnetic field correspond to this purple curve. As we increase the magnetic field, after a certain threshold, 
a single stable fixed point for prolate particles develops, meaning that the orientation of the particles is stable in this direction. However, for oplate swimmers, when we increase the field after a certain threshold, there are two stable fixed points, one representing the swimmers that are moving upward and upstream, the other one representing the swimmers that are moving downward and upstream. And when we increase the field again, after a certain uh, other threshold, there is only one fixed point, one stable fixed point, representing the case of swimmers moving slightly upstream and towards the lower wall. Now, this difference can be shown better by using these two graphs, uh, showing the stable and unstable fixed points. As you can see, again, for prolate spheres, there is only one single fixed point as we increase the field. And uh, this pinning direction is near the upstream direction, but slightly towards the lower wall. For the case of oplates, the area between the two thresholds, reverse migration regime, represents the case of two swimmers, uh, two classes of swimmers, one moving upward and upstream, and the other one moving downward and again upstream. Those moving downward will end up near the lower wall, unsurprisingly, and those moving upward will uh, end up near the upper wall. Now, the consequences of that is that we can plot these phase diagrams, and based on those, we can suggest two mechanisms of separations. Remember that sudden jump in the fraction of swimmers in the lower half near the lower wall? Well, that, that can be used for separation of oplate swimmers based on aspect ratio in the full migration regime. And also, because of the stable upstream direction of swimming of both prolate and oplate swimmers in the pinning regime, we can rely on the net upstream flux in order to separate the swimmers based on their different aspect ratios and also on their swimming velocity. Now, these analyses could be generalized to the case of passive particles, as we mentioned before, again, to show the model, with a difference that in place of activity, in place of swimming speed, we enter the lift velocity that is generated by the hydrodynamic interaction between the particles and the channel walls. The rotational velocity is basically the same as the case of active particles and therefore needs no further explanation. Now, as you can see, for a strong enough magnetic fields representing this ratio, mag magnetic torque to dimensionless uh, flow Peclet number, in the case of uh, transverse magnetic field, we see that prolate spheroids are focused by the lift velocity, which is shown by the blue arrows, in the middle of the channel and on the channel center line. Around this curve, which is the pinning curve, representing the stable fixed points in the orientational space, i.e. the uh, pinning orientations. Now, this will cause the prolate particles of actually different aspect ratios to be focused around the channel center line with different levels of a spread, of course, in the transverse magnetic field. <clears throat> but spherical particles, because generally they don't experience any lift velocity inside the channel, end up near the walls due to thermal effects, which are only present in our model and not the previous theoretical models. And this, as we can see, closely resembles the case of experimental studies. That, uh, 
being that, uh, as I said in the beginning, prolate particles are focused in the middle of the channel and spheres are ended, end up near the lower wall. And uh, the reason uh, for the difference between the two cases, as you can see here, that uh, the experimental observation only covers the lower half is that the particles are fed into the channel only from the uh, inlet near the bottom wall. Now, in order to separate particles of different aspect ratios, this setup isn't efficient because all the prolate particles in this field direction, transverse field direction, end up near the middle of the channel. So, we change the field direction and in less acute field directions, we can separate the oblate particles in the lower half of the channel, as you can see here in the concentration uh, plots. These peaks are very, very well separated, so the particles can be separated, oblate particles, but prolate particles are uh, inter uh, have uh, intertwined peaks. So we need to change the field direction again to more acute field directions in order to separate the prolate particles. But this time, uh, although the prolate particles are separated very nicely, as can be seen from these uh, concentration graphs, the oblate particles are uh, overlapping. Therefore, they cannot be separated. And the trick is to ch choose the right uh, field direction in order to separate the particle with the maximum efficiency. Thank you very much. Well, um, thank you very much, especially for uh, for the sake of time. Basically, we are now ahead of time. We have time for questions and a nice long break. Okay, okay may I ask a question? Please. Yes, Reza, please. Okay. Say, and uh, just uh, uh, I'm wondering that if you don't have magnetic field in the, as a control, how the particles are separated from each other in the channel? Say the channel. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize the question. Uh, I'm just asking in the absence of the uh, magnetic field uh, yeah. to control the direction of the particles. Yes. If you put the particles inside the channel. Uh, how how they are separated just because of the shape without mm -hmm. a magnetic field this is the question okay. without the magnetic field, uh, because yeah. of the magnetic field. for the control signal that's in the absence of the magnet because it could be ni nicer that we compare the results of the magnetic field with the case of the without magnetic field yes uh, if we are speaking about the passive spheroids in the absence of magnetic fields, uh, the lift velocity that is generated by the dynamic interaction between the spheroids and the walls only causes the particles to move back and forth between the channel walls, but basically end up at the same position that they had at the inlet. And between the inlet and the outlet, they don't change their position very much. In order to break this symmetry and force the particles to be limited to a single orientation and end up in a single point across the channel, i.e. be focused, we need the magnetic field orientation, the magnetic field and also a strong magnetic field in the pinning regime. I hope I answered the question. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's basically just to add a comment. It's basically the problem of uh, Taylor dispersion. If you have, if you don't have a magnetic field, they will be really yeah. mixed, and this is a known thing for colloids in microfluidic channels. Yes, that's very well lucky, Thank yeah. you. Any other questions? So, uh, can I ask? Uh huh. Please. So, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, how is the activity model uh, in the uh, Smolchowski equations here? Uh, I, I missed it, sorry. The active model? Yeah, for the active models. Yes. Uh, in the Smolchowski equation for the active model, we use a simple translation of velocity, uh, meaning that because of the 
symmetry, the convection by the flow is removed from the model and only the uh, swimming velocity with certain direction enters into the Smolakovsky equation. And the rotational velocities are basically the same as of the passive case. One part due to Jeffrey orbits in the shear flow and the other one due to the magnetic torque. So, uh, so in this case, uh, it's just like a constant uh, velocity. So there is no change in the direction due to the actor forces? Uh, no, no. Uh, when I say constant velocity, I mean the magnitude of velocity is fixed, but the orientation changes in the two-dimensional plane of the flow. Okay, so it's like a rotational diffusion model. Yeah, so it's active Brownian particle, but except that the particles have an el elongated shape, like uh, uh, a spheroidal shape. But otherwise, yes. if they were points, like spheres, they were exactly ABPs, active Brownian particle model. Yes, okay. if, it, if it weren't for these uh, uh, anisotropic diffusion constants, it would be the same as the ABP model, as Professor Naji just said. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Uh, still have time, I think, for one more question, I guess. Uh, well, actually, we are over time. No, we are, we are set for the break. So 